Hey, Albert and Eddie. I'm Ryan Holleen. I'm the vice president of the A plus D Museum. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Can you introduce yourselves? Yeah, uh, my name is Albert Orozco, and um, I'm a, I'm you know I'm a designer and artist here in Los Angeles. And Eddie. Sure. Hi, my name is Eddie Rivero, and I'm a PhD candidate at the University of California, Berkeley in the Graduate School of Education. And I'm also a poet and artist. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us. I'm excited to talk about your work and congratulations. So what, what made you select this project for the A plus D awards? Well, this is um this is a project that you know Eddie and I had been wanting to to do for a while, right? And um, I guess what made us choose this project is just the relevancy of it, right? Um, all the different deportations that are happening here in the United States, all the displacement, separations, and you know Eddie and I are first generation Latinos. So we know what the um, immigrant struggle is here, being in the United States or being wanting to survive, wanting to be with family, wanting to be a part of a, a land, right? That is that is for everyone. So uh, we chose this story, um, this specific project, because I thought it was we thought it was a good um, project in a way to to create awareness um, for for other communities who might not be aware. Of, of what's happening, you know, today. Yeah, and to, uh, to add a little bit more to that, um, we wanted to design, uh, we wanted to show how space uh, really affects uh, people that have been historically dispossessed, like migrants, mm -hmm. um, and how we can create something better and more relational to the land along the border. So rather than creating something that divides people or that serves the interest of empires or nation states, uh, we wanted to imagine in a place that would actually serve the land and paid homage to like the indigenous peoples and the lands and also that um, didn't wasn't as violent or nearly as violent towards migrants that are uh, trying to make a better life for themselves as they're coming over here. Um, so that was really like the motivation behind this project. And we thought that uh, this intersection of storytelling and architecture uh, was really a powerful way to convey this and um, to humanize the experience too. Cause you hear, you hear a lot of numbers like 69,000 uh, migrant children were detained in these, uh, what I think are concentration camps really. Um, but uh, when you see it through the lens of a story you're really able to see like, wow, like this is a child. Like think about um, your own child, right? Being in these situations, growing up and developing in these conditions. Um, so yeah, we wanted to really highlight that to uh, expose people that haven't heard about it uh, to the conditions right. that are happening and also to build with people that are organizing and um, trying to dismantle these um, uh, detention centers or concentration camps. Yeah, there's a, there's a richness to the project and it's, it's amazing you can, you're gonna humanize something because like to your point, there, there's so many stats out there these days and people just lose interest with the numbers and they forget what the numbers represent. So I think it's great that you're able to create a project where you're putting a spotlight on something that's happening right now, something very real and very serious, but you're um, also making a proposal of how it can manifest itself on the border and actually knit two, two communities together while addressing the situation. Can you maybe go a little bit deeper into the relationship about the imagery and the narrative? You know, the connections between them, the imagery is so rich and, and the narrative is beautiful. Yeah. Can you talk um, about the interrelationship between those two. Yeah, so um, I guess just to, I, I guess this kind of ties into kind of the process, right? Of what it means to narrate not just a, a story, but also what is what are these types of images that we're trying to convey, right? So when it, when Eddie and I started um, doing our research, right, we you know we were seeing these massive numbers of people being deported, right, and the displacement of of children, 
and, and families in general. And um, we started looking up detention centers, right? So, you know, just off the bat, we started looking at images, right? We were trying to find images that kind of describe the architecture, right? The landscape, the interiority of these spaces of what these people are placed in. And, um, and, um, and, and what we found is that there's not so many um, images, right? Um, kind of that are, for example, the first image where the where the um, the story begins, right? It's the end of the detention center. There was a lot of footage, right? Videos that were from these aerial, almost surveillance type points. And what we wanted to do was kind of switch the view, right? Kind of like we constructed this this space, and we wanted to show kind of what it feels or what it, it means to be inside one of these spaces. Um, so in the story. Uh, the two protagonists, uh, Margarita and Juanito, right? Juanito is the uh, nephew of Margarita. And, um, you know, and he wakes up from a nightmare. And, you know, you see kind of this idea, you know, like the landscape of people um, sleeping on these dilapidated um, pa green pads and the, the space blankets, right? And the minimalism within the space and how people are put in cages, et cetera, et cetera. And then, um, you know, back in, you know, you know, I've known Eddie um, since 2008, Eddie, yeah. And we were both, you know, in, in UC Berkeley together. And we were, you know, we were talking about maquiladoras too. And we started seeing a connection. So maquiladoras are these US factory, uh, they're, they're factories owned by the United States that are in Mexico, that employ Mexicans, right? And uh, a lot of women work in these factories. And there's this issue of, of women disappearing and dying, you know, after work, walking from home, being raped, uh, you know, and um, and we started seeing the architecture as well in these in these in these factories, right? It's it's the same architecture you see in detention centers, right? The same lighting, the same tonalities, um, the cages inside, minimalism in there, and um, and it just started bringing up these connections, right, of how the U.S. views um, migrants or how migrants are being placed um, it, within these types of architecture, right, uh, spaces. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess the imagery is almost uh, throughout the, the story, these images um, repetitively use these um, detention centers and um, maquiladoras, right, to kind of talk about the story, what, you know, the components with it, you know, within it, right? So, I guess, um, you know, in the story, Juanito wakes up from a nightmare, right? And um, and what happens is that he, you know, the nightmare was that La Llorona, um, which is translates to the Wailing Woman, um, uh, is chasing him through El Rio Grande, where he's from, in Juarez, and um, he's scared. So the story of La Llorona just, you know, very quickly, um, it's a story of a mother who essentially, um, you know, drowns her children in the river. And um, when she, you know, she's basically left, when she dies, she kills herself. She's left in, in earth to wander looking for her children, right? So this is a story that like Eddie and I grew up with. And it's something mm -hmm. that was told to us as children um, to kind of keep us in, in inside um, our houses after hours, right? right. Um, it's keep like- and uh, to keep us safe, um, but the you know we're being kept safe by by creating a myth of a woman, you know, a murderer, um, and and kind of this really sad story. It's kind of like it's you know it's kind of like villain like vil I'm sorry, I cannot just say that word. Vi villainizing the um, this woman's story, this person's st or this story, and. Um, and anyway, he wakes up and what Margarita does is essentially begins to tell him a different story of, right. of La Llorona to kind of uh, reframe that. And um, I think that throughout the images, um, you see like the second one is the La Maquiladora, right? It's like, uh, it becomes like this after dark studio where all the, the machinery tables gets pushed to the side and then center all the different plants, ecologies, the map in the back that um, that kind of um, points all the different detention centers in the United States and how they connect it to this one zone, right? The intersection between the U U.S.-Mexico border and Rio Grande and the river border as well, right? Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So it's, um, in a way, these images um, use this architecture of violence, you know, I want to call it, and kind of reimagines them as different spaces. And, and it's a way of, of kind of, um, you know, always keeping the, the, the issue at hand, but also changing the narrative and what, what happens in the interiority of these spaces, almost like the landscape changes. And, um, and it becomes a story of hope, right? Right. Um, at the end of it. So, yeah, I don't know if you have. No, it's amazing because you, you, you take a childhood story something that's known by generations and then you take it and you, 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 you change it slightly, make it more of a positive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and uh, as Albert was saying, um, yeah, there's often like, th because of patriarchy over the generations, um, women are often vilified and uh, made the antagonist of story. So what if we flip these narratives and actually like, Right. center women's right. experiences and showcase the violence that's happening at the borders, especially through uh, family separation, right? And we make them the heroes of the story, this imagined collective of mothers and women that are trying to get their, they're trying to find their children, just like La, La Llorona was um, trying right. to find her children in the, uh, in the myth. Um, so I think that's, that's one, that's why we say we take an intersectional lens because there's like a gender dimension to this with all the feminist side that's happening. Uh, at the border as well through these maquilas. And then um, there's also like the child development aspect. Um, there's obviously issues of colonialism and immigration um, that's happening. So th there's a lot to this story that you can unpack. And like, we, we imagine like building on this story and developing like various chapters um, that, would, yeah. that would go deeper into these characters uh, to highlight the various issues that intersect at this border. And so that those intersections like they also inform our design too. We want to we want to make an intersectional design, like thinking about the land and stories and and all of that. So it's a very complex issue that needs a lot of um, it needs a lot of deep thinking. And and folks that are doing grassroots work are already doing this type of work. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to take like a like a top down solution like that'll fix all. Um, so yeah, uh, we hope that as um, solutions come out for for like what, what is to be done at the border um, that, uh, you know, organizers are contacted, artists are, are contacted, collective of, of folks that have been struggling to reimagine what the border looks like. Um, their voices are centered rather than like uh, politicians or corporations trying to make money off the situation. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And I, I mean, I can just share with, with you personally, I mean, what, what really drew me in is the layers how many layers of meaning and information because you know, you're drawn in with the beautiful simplicity of the imagery. And then you pause and you look into it a little bit deeper and then you start to see the details. And then you start to understand what this is really talking about. And that's where you, know, you can go as far as you can go and learn about these terrible things that are happening and learn about the history of these things and understand that it's been going on for generations. So I think it's interesting that through the imagery, you're taking people to that place where they have the ability to learn more and to start a dialogue about what's happening and how we can improve it and how we can correct it. I guess I would ask each of you, I mean, if, if there was a single message in the narrative that you would want the viewer to come away with, um, what would that be for each of you? Um. You know, when um, for me, what was productive about the, this project was um, putting um, all these different issues in perspective, right? And how they connect and knowing that, you know, the issues, um, you know, the deportation issues um, at detention centers, the, the issues of, of murders um, and violence at the maquilas and and also the, the death that happened at the US, you know, Mexico border and, and so on and so forth. And even the disappearing women of Juarez, right? Um, um, it, it like how in, in, in many more, how all these, all these stories kind of connect. So, you know, I guess, you know, the message for me or what, you know, what I would like people to come with is to, to start beginning to kind of piece, um, 
these narratives together, right? And, and putting them in perspective and giving um, people of color, especially um, migrants, a voice um, here in, in, in the land in the United States, right? Because, um, you know, they don't have a voice. And um, it's, and oftentimes, you know, it's, it's, I mean, it's that, I mean, that is, that is a message is that it's, you know, giving kind of agency or giving, uh, you know, relevance to, to this issue and, and, and knowing that, you know, we are, you know, people say that we're on borrowed land. I say we are in stolen land, you know, from colonial times, you know, and, and, and really understanding you are, we are in stolen land and this land is not just, you know, ours, but it's everyone else's. And it's, um, and it's something that I, I, I would like people to begin to understand um, within the process of design, right, as well. It's like, who are you designing for? And who are the people involved, you know, and, right. and, and, and putting, you know, the, you know, I, you know, California, for example, is, you know, you know, the, the population is minority, is, is my primarily people of color. <laughs> Yet, you know, Everywhere you go, you see it's like wealthy people, white people, right? Um, taking over all these corporations, you know, uh, you know, and 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 it's they're they're being run and by by these people, and it's like it's you know migrants are are kind of left to the side, you know, and um, right people of color are kind of just you know are secondary, right? Um, I was at a friend's graduation and. And um, I forget the name of the keynote speaker, but, you know, he was, he said a, a really nice message, you know, he had said that, you know, we were once the, the architects, the engineers, the scientists, right, we were these people and, and then we've been, we've been, um, you know, kind of downgraded or, or put as the cooks, as the field workers, as like the cleaning people, right, we, we, we've become servants, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. this population and, um, and, you know, the message was like, you know, there's a lot of youth, you know, kind of coming out from colleges and, and things trying to make a change. So I, I do hope that the, the world progresses um, in that direction, um, which we have been seeing, you know, this past year, you know, it's been very, um, and, and I just hope it continues and, and change happens for, for everybody. Positive change, yeah. Great. How about you, Eddie? Yeah, to add a little bit more to that, I love what you're saying, Alfred. Um, um, if you, in, in the story, we make a reference to a congressman from New York. Um, we keep it ambiguous, but really we were thinking about AOC um, yeah, in this. I saw the reason we brought that in is that um, even though, again, this is a very like precarious situation, there's a lot of violence that's happening. Uh, we did want to leave a message of hope and like, uh, envision what it would take for such a thing, uh, for us to be able to actually enact this vision of reimagining the border. Um, and so it, really it's gonna take um, foregrounding the voices of, of, of folks, migrants that have been involved, like Albert was saying, that have been impacted by this. And also the organizers, again, um, that are uh, mobilizing to uh, dismantle and abolish borders and, and uh, create something new and more constructive and more relational with the land. And also, you know, politicians, also folks writing stories like myself and Albert, architects, artists. Um, so yeah, it's not just like lawyers or one field. It's going to have to be an intersectional, interdisciplinary um, struggle and um, cooperation happening, collaborations happening uh, for for something of this magnitude to actually um, to actually be enacted and manifested. But I think the the role of the artist and the storyteller and the architect is is to put forth a vision of, of what could be and how we construct a, a better right. future for for those that have been again uh, impacted um, by colonialism and have been historically dispossessed by these structures what brought you both to the field of architecture I know you've touched on it briefly can you go into a little bit more depth on that um, well I'm in the field of architecture you know Eddie's in education um, and um, I guess what, what brought me into the field of architecture, I mean, I've been knowing that I want to do architecture since I was a kid. <laughs> um, I, I just love drawing, you know, and, um, and, you know, I grew up here in South Central LA, right? And, um, 
there was there's just you know the communities the way that that you know even you know blacks and latinos right here in, in la the zones are placed in you know you see a very different very a difference from like west la and east la right and as a kid i started connecting these 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 things seeing like my dilapidated street everything tagged up I was like, why do we live in these, these places? Why are they like this? And, and I guess that's why I got into architecture to kind of begin to, to see these connections. Um, and it's been a tough journey, right? Because when you, you know, when you go into these institutions, right? Like, um, and, and that, you know, that teach architecture, you're not taught, you know, for me, I was the only like Latino, <laughs> um, not the only one, but the only Latino, I guess, from, from LA who, you know, in my program and, and, um, and, you know, the things that we learn are not, you know, social is issues, they're, they're not issues that are happening, you know, urban, when we talk about urban design, you know, we don't talk about these communities and how we can begin to re-envision them. Um, so I, I guess, you know, for me, it's been a journey. And after I graduated, I just started um you know focusing on this type of work it's like how can i begin to use architecture architectural representation urban design to begin to connect these stories right um not just for the realm of of the, the designers right um but also just um everyone else like artists your tios or tias you know how do we begin to connect these things and i think it's like a you know the, the work that eddie and i you know that's kind of an example right um we're both connected because you know we're both artists but you know i'm in the design field he's an education field and then how can we create that intersectional begin to you know talk about these issues you know from two different fields um and um and you know eddie is, is doing his dissertation um which is very spatial, right, as well. So I don't know if you wanna elaborate a little more on that, Eddie. Yeah, sure, I can do a quick, um, yeah, so I think even though I'm kind of, I'm not in the field of architecture necessarily, I, I am informed by architectural theories when it comes to uh, designing learning environments for young people. Um, again, uh, especially nowadays when uh, young people are learning a lot in virtual ecologies, virtual uh, media ecologies, like how do we make sure that the spaces that they're in um, are actually centering their needs, their voices, their experiences, um, and not, uh, especially again, I work mostly with young people of color, so uh, I need to ensure that the architecture of these virtual spaces are, are something that's, that's um, interesting and accessible. Um, and even when they're not, like how are young people glitching systems or like creating um, these like heterotopias or these like small, um, how are they designing within the cracks or fissures of virtual spaces to, to make space for themselves? Um, that's always something that's really interested me. So uh, again, even though I'm not in the field necessarily, it does, those architectural theories do inform how I think about designing learning uh, and designing learning environments with young people. Perfect. Um, so what brought you to the design awards at the A plus D museum? Um, we, we, um, we heard about the design awards. Um, you know, I've known about the a and museum because I, I'm from Los Angeles and, um, you know, I, I like the kind of, you know, work that gets presented there. And, um, and when we saw this, we were like, this is an opportunity to, to put the story out. You know, I, I know it was a competition, but for us, it was, um, uh, really about just getting, um, you know, the story out to, again, to people who don't, might not know about this issue, right? right. And, um, and, um, and, you know, I, we thought it was, a, you know, we entered in the, the wall category, right? Because this is kind of how we envision the, the project being shown and, and presented. And um, I don't know, I think it's, uh, in a way, it's, uh, it's it's our way of kind of communicating to uh, to organizations, you know, like the AD Museum, the type of work we want to start seeing um, being showcased or presented or recognized, right? Because um, the, these are this is like you know the story that we're presenting is just happening to so many people, right? It's happening to a large population here in Los Angeles, and it's like a 
I think that people don't talk about or you don't see in these types of spaces because, you know, they're just, you know, people are just not being acknowledged or, or, or the work is not being put out there. Right? There's so, the work is there. It's just not, I don't know what it is, but, um, but anyway, just, that's. It just needs to be shared with more and more people. Exactly. Yeah. And get it out there in as many diverse places as possible. Mm hmm Right. And I used to work at the Exploratorium. Actually, I still do uh, as a consultant um, in San Francisco. So I feel like muse museums are great spaces of learning, uh, getting uh, stories out there, um, getting different technologies and designs out there to the public. Um, so yeah, it's a way of being like a public intellectual um, and really shifting discourses or, or, or changing like how people perceive the world in hopefully a positive way. Um, so I think that's something that I think this story does. Um, so that's why we're excited to, to submit um, to your, to the museum. Yeah, and we're, we're lucky to have you submit it, obviously, because we love the project. And, um, you know, we as an organization, we're always trying to um, increase our reach and get as many different people and cultures and representatives into the room as possible, because it's all about the conversation and breaking down barriers. Um, so for, for someone who's trying to navigate all the information and really get to the reality of the situation that's going on down there, are there any resources you'd recommend? Um, yeah, I mean, look, there's, there's uh, a lot of, lot of resources. Um, I really like the work that Border Angels is doing Right, they're um, they're an organization, um, and just from what you know, their mission is: Border Angels promotes a culture of love through advocacy, education by creating a social consciousness and engaging in direct action to defend the rights of migrants and refugees. So, you know, they've been very active um, since, for example, the deport, you know, people being detained in detention centers, raising money to hire lawyers, getting them out. They have a couple of programs called Familias Unidas Bond Program, which is in kind of what I talked about. Uh, water drops where people place, um, uh, they place um, gallons of water throughout the, the desert landscape so that people who are crossing the border don't die of dehydration. Um, and, you know, they have green cards for kids programs, you know, and they have just uh, an amazing array of, of different um, of different uh, programs that 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 are you know that represent migrants and help them. So I think um, you know that would be like a resource um, if you wanted to get informed more about uh, these issues. And um, I, I don't know, Eddie, do you know? And get involved. And get involved exactly. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Yeah. There's if you do like research on like local organizations along the border, I'm sure there's a lot to pop up, but. Uh, I, ACLU always has a lot of good resources. There's another organization called Raices, which is a legal one. Um, it helps like folks in detention centers um, throughout the legal process. Um, there's a lot of things like on, on uh, what is it called? Like GoFundMe or things like that where you can support. Yeah, yeah again, uh, supporting- at a very local level with people that right. are on the ground down there. Right, and cool. then re using your social media, but also like using uh, your material resources to like donate and actually provide those kinds of things. Uh, mo monetary compensation is always very important. Great. Well, I know that 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 was a tough question. So I think, you know, maybe at the end of this, we can add in some uh, links to some organizations so that people that are interested can get information from a reliable source and get involved. Mm -hmm. That would be awesome. Right. Um, so the final question I have for you both is into the future, what do you want the A&D Museum to be? Um, well, I, like, I, I mean, it's, it's um, I think it's kind of, I'm gonna reiterate what I said, but I, I think I want it to be, a, 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 I guess a more, you know, cultural space, right? That, that gives representation to, mm -hmm to um, people, you know, communities of color, but also like migrant communities, right? It's, it, there's a large population and it's, 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 you know, promoting, it's like, uh, you know, giving that space to people because 
um, you know, I'm an artist, for example, I know so many artists um, from, from South Central LA, but also from, from Southeast LA, right? Where there's a large Black and Latino population. And, um, and there, you know, there's so many artists that, that, that um, write about these issues and draw about them and paint and, and, and um, create music. And, um, and it's very difficult for museums, for, you know, just museums or, or galleries to kind of take in their work out, you know, they submit, it just never gets accepted um, because it doesn't resonate with, you know, the board or whatever it is. I don't know what it is, but, um, but, um, but yeah, it's just giving more recognition and more, more spaces and more opportunities to those kind of uh, narratives and, and arts and, um, and stories, right? Like the um, kind of what we're presenting um, with the, you know, you don't know the body story. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I can't add too much more to that. I, I like, I love what you're saying, Albert, um, just to echo some things, uh, just making sure that um, multiple voices are being in histories and or cultural histories are being represented. Um, also, uh, through this, uh, we'll, through uh, sharing a, di a diverse set of stories and voices, uh, hopefully more issues are highlighted so that the public is informed. Um, and they're exposed to like uh, a plethora of knowledges um, moving forward, which which I think um, is part of like the mission of of A and D. So hopefully um, that aligns pretty well. Yeah, no, it definitely is. Well, thank you both so much for your time and for sharing your thoughts on the work. Uh, thank you for submitting. It's amazing. Yeah, thank you for for having us. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, and for for you know, rec you know, giving recognition to to our work and um and yeah, we thought this was a, a really really awesome um thing you all did. Yeah, thank you for taking the time and for your consideration. Uh, we appreciate you all.